Hello, welcome back to Land Rover Toolbox videos. How we're working here is working on the flat, or this is how we call it in the workshop. So getting back to the plot and our Land Rover, we're now going to be inspecting the rear axle. <laughs> Okay, so let's start with the axle with the wheels on the ground initially first. So what we want to do is look at the tie rod end, check the bolts are there, that the bushes are in good condition and the fixing itself is in good condition around it that there's no corrosion. When you look at the bolts on the side here you should have your three in place and there shouldn't be any gaps or signs of wearing. If there is on the bracket it needs changing. If the bracket is bent, or if the tie rod is bent, then what you'll find is you'll get feathering on your tyres. This is very evident because the tracking will be out. On the other end of the tie rod you have a bush and a bolt. The bolt should be square with the bracket and you can check this by using a lever bar and pushing it down. You can hear a clunking if the bush is worn or loose. This bush is showing signs of excessive movement. It's worth also checking the bracket on the axle tubing to make sure that the weld is not cracked or the bracket is coming away from the axle. Looking up at the spring, check the spring is sitting on the spring seat and it's secure. What you have to hold the spring in place is a bar with two bolts. This one's corroded and will need changing, however the spring is firm and held down. Bump stops, like this one here, should really be there and they should be in good condition. What these do is um, stop the axle from bashing the chassis. We can see on this side that it's actually missing. Whether it's rotted or has been knocked off I don't know. However it's getting a new set of bump stops. And you can see here the uh, bits left over. Shock absorbers, the fixings have to be secure and tight. Now this isn't secure bush is worn. You have to check the shrouding and make sure there's no leaking. If it's leaking it's an MOT failure and down the bottom here it wants to be secure. The bushes do not want to be perished. Well, these are in good condition. Generally what you want to do is check to make sure that they are in good condition and not loose. And grab hold of the shocker and twist it. Now this is quite firm. If you look at this one you can see the dark area where it's loose and it's been wearing on a bracket. The correct term for a shock absorber is actually a damper, but we'll call it a shock absorber in this tutorial. So generally make sure it's not leaking, it's fixed properly, the tie rod bush isn't worn, and the spring is sitting on its seat correctly and fixed. The other fixing is the A-frame ball joint, and this one you put a bar underneath and lift it. If it's got lift, it's worn and it needs replacing, and you can usually tell when these are worn by the banging you get when you take up drive. You can see the lift on that. The gator is also split, so this needs changing. Always check to make sure it has its fixings. A popular component to fail is the prop shafts. And this one I'm checking for lift and then turning to see if the splines are worn. In this case they actually are. If I move it gently you can see it's got play between the two. This is not acceptable. This would um, render the prop shaft US or unserviceable. Twisting and lifting the prop shaft you can also see if the UJ joints are worn and doing this you can see that it is actually okay. The bearing wear if there is any on the output shaft of the gearbox will show up as well. On the other end you can see that the UJ is actually worn and this also is unserviceable. Don't forget the fixings of the prop shaft to the flange. You can usually check these by using 9 16 or 15 or 14 mil spanners, whichever one will fit. And you'll notice also there's a pinion seal leak on the diff, so that'll need changing as well. Checking the brake pads with the wheels on is not that difficult if you have a mirror. Use the mirror and you can look down to see what thickness your pads are. And you can see here the thickness. Okay, so the mirror is actually pretty good, or you could try to feel with your fingers to see if you've got any wear material left. 
Right, the other thing on this axle regarding brakes is the brake pipes. Now, they are very, very important. MOT failures are quite common with brake pipes. This one's loose, and I'm following it back, and it's also chafing on the axle, which is not acceptable. What it should be is secure and not chafing anywhere. We can see here the pipe's loose, and it's been loosely bound by something. It's been chafing on the axle down there. This is not acceptable. And also up here we have a kink in the pipe which is very naughty because that will be stopping fluid getting to the uh, near side brake. Now this is a big no-no because you can see that it's stopping any fluid from getting to the caliper. Looking a bit closer, especially at this disc, there's fluid on the disc which could either be brake fluid or it could be um, axle oil. We don't know, we need to inspect a bit further with the wheel off. Right, so jacking the wheels up. Generally, the best way to do this is to go around and check all the wheel bearings before you take any wheels off. In this case, we're starting at the front, checking for any lift or play that's in the bearings. And then after then, the next thing you can do is check the condition of the tyres. You're looking for damage on the sidewalls, any type of cuts to cord, splitting bulges in the tyre or generally a misshaped tyre. This sort of checking could save your life or the life of somebody else, so take your time doing it. We've already checked the tread depth, so now while we're turning the tyre we can look for any cuts, nails, screws stuck in there or possibly a tool that somebody's dropped off their vehicle. We will be looking at transmission behaviour and seeing if there's any faults, especially with the vehicle off the ground. But we'll leave that because this is quite a lengthy subject to cover. Using the sense of your hand, you can feel whether the tyre is actually feathered or not, and this will indicate any tracking problems on the rear or the front axle. So now that we've been round and we've jacked all the wheels up, checked the bearings and the tyres, we can now crack the wheel nuts off just on the rear axle here. You can see I've actually got quite a long bar, it's because the wheel nuts are tight. And then jack it up, put it on stands. Once the vehicle's on stands, you can then remove the wheel nuts completely. Once the wheel's off, we can have a better look, check for leaks and any other abnormalities, especially with the brakes. This is an opportunity to check for cracks, Especially if the wheel's been over tightened, if there's any damage either side, and especially cracks. Yes, aluminium and steel wheels do crack, especially from over tightening. With the wheel off, you can have a good scan across to see if there's anything loose or broken. And we get a good view of the spring, the shock absorber, its brackets, and the chassis. Turns out that the fuel line here is chafing on the chassis and it's come off its bracket. <coughs> So we found ourselves with some type of fluid on the brake disc which needs immediate rectification, it would be fairly irresponsible to go on the road with only three brakes working properly. And what we found is a hub seal leak. You can see the stub axle and the mess here. Not only has the seal apparently been put in the wrong way, but the seal land, which is this bit here, is also quite corroded and is possibly stopping the seal from sealing. Ideally a new stub axle is what's needed, however at this point when we were doing the inspection we didn't have anything, so we had to clean the seal land of corrosion to see if it will seal the seal. And uh, Also nicking a seal out of a bearing kit, which I have here, the idea was to fit a new seal and hope it would stay sealed until we could get another stub axle to fit. And after a week it did actually seal, but in the meantime we had to make sure the brakes were working. It's a waste of time trying to clean a brake pad once it's contaminated, where a disc it's good enough you can clean that off because it's got a metal non-absorbent surface. Generally we use a brake cleaner and this stuff will shift any oil and you can see the oil coming out of the metal here, look at that. Just as a general hint, reline both sets of pads on the axle and we have STC 1277G 
set of rear brake pads for 300 TDI, which are for Rodo. They are absolutely fantastic wearing pads. And the next thing we've got to do is rectify this brake pipe fault. We'll be covering all the defects that we found on this vehicle in more depth, and tutorials have shown you how to do things. So stay tuned. Ha <laughs> ha